Hey, what's up, nerds? Hey, it's Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, I'm going to talk about Warhammer on a budget. Uh, with the recent price increase announcement that Game Workshop has made, uh, a lot of people are, uh, you know, uh, upset about it and looking for other options, thinking about other options to uh, get their uh, game on a little bit less expensive. So uh, I thought I would go through uh, some of what I know anyway about this and um, we can uh, explore together and hopefully you guys can find some ways to, uh, you know, get things a little bit cheaper. So as we know, Games Workshop is expensive armies can easily be in the range of like 500 to a thousand dollars at msrp um to kind of just get like a starter for me basically um they do sell bundles that have contents at discount there are retailers that um are selling at discounts uh, there are secondary markets available and of course, there's alternative sculpts from competitors and 3D printing and, uh, you know, converting is also an option, but that can be um, a bit more intensive. So I'm not really going to talk about that too much. Uh, I think that could probably just be a video on its own. Anyway, um, this is going to be mostly from an Age of Sigmar and Old World perspective. Um, so... Uh, you know, I really don't know too much about 40k, although a lot of this is going to really be uh, the same stuff for 40k as well, with just kind of like different branding on it. All right, so discount retailers. My understanding from talking to retailers is that they are allowed to advertise new product up to 15% off of MSRP. So, uh, there's going to be lots of people that are going to put stuff on the shelf 15% off in their stores. And as far as I know, Games and Workshop is totally okay with that. It means that the store's margin is a little bit tighter, but they're probably going to move more product that way. Uh, some places are going to offer bigger discounts for things. Um, you know, one of the things that I've found is a lot of times... Uh, if you go to, you know, a, a league or a tournament, you're probably going to get some sort of discount uh, that day from a lot of retailers. They, you know, they want to sell product to the audience that they know is captive in their store at the moment. Uh, old products. Um, when things have been sitting around for a while, they tend to go on clearance, so to speak. So... Uh, no different for Warhammer stuff uh, if it's been sitting around for a while, particularly when you look at things that are on secondary markets but are still new product, as well as, um, you know, you might go to like a convention or something like that. And, you know, the, the, some uh, vendor there might have a stack of stuff that is, uh, you know, perhaps a certain Age of Sigmar box that was like wildly overproduced at a huge steep discount. I have seen that happen many times. Uh, Mini Stomp is an online seller. Um, I believe their website is just ministomp.com, um, but you can't order through their website. Uh, you have to email them and ask for stuff and they'll give you prices. And they're typically more than that 15% off of MSRP but uh, I don't know exactly how they're getting through a loophole there or what. Maybe Games Workshop. I mean, Games Workshop's got to know about this by now. They've been doing this for a long time. Um, so uh, they, you can get discounts from them. I've gotten stuff up to 30% off MSRP. Um, I think they get around the advertising loophole by our advertising thing as like a loophole like they don't actually advertise prices they give you prices when you um request things they just tell you how much it is um and of course there's also recasters and printers out there like 3d printers um 
you know, technology has gotten to the point where people can just, you know, if there's scanners available, 3D scanners that can create an STL file and uh, just reprint miniatures. Recasters, um, you know, they're creating a mold of the sprues or the model and uh, just making their own casts out of it and making more models, often quite cheap. Now, recasters and printers are of questionable legality. Um, so beware. Also, those are not necessarily going to be the highest quality. Um, it's going to depend on who you get stuff from. And, you know, some of it can be great. Some of it will be crap, but it's not going to be, um, it ain't what you're getting off the shelf from GW. All right. Stuff that Games Workshop actually sells. So right now they're Spearhead, Vanguard, and Combat Patrol boxes. They range from about 140 to 160 uh, in US dollars. Uh, the contents are typically about 30% off of what the cost would be of the individual kits that are included in it. Like if you bought them all separately, it's about 30% less. Uh, in addition, uh, the old version of this was start collecting boxes, and those were a bit smaller, and they had about the same kind of discount. Some retailers may still have these on the shelves if they've just been sitting out for a while. And uh, you can find a lot of them still like on eBay that, you know, places that have just had them sitting around forever. Uh, sometimes they're even going to be cheaper than their original MSRP or their like MSRP minus 15% or whatever uh, because they've been their old inventory. Up next, uh, the FOMO boxes, um, or at least, yeah, that's generally what we call them. Uh, th these are the big boxes that tend to come out with the launch of some major new model release. Um, they'll come out and they'll be all new sculpts in box. They will typically include a limited edition book, whether it be, you know, Battle Tome or Codex or whatever. Um, and you'll get your like war scroll cards, obviously the models and, and a variety of other stuff. Sometimes um, the value on these is going to vary. Um, and some of the value is also kind of kind of vary on like how highly you value the uh, book that comes with it or the cards. So it, it these things are also limited production. They tend to just make like basically one big print run of these and then they launch it and when it's gone, it's gone. And like anything else, sometimes these can just be sitting on the shelves, but these typically sell out pretty quickly. Next, the holiday boxes. Another thing that this is just not uh, advertised as being holiday boxes, but around, uh, you know, November, December every year, they release these big bundle boxes that have a ton of stuff in them. Um, they're usually somewhere in the neighborhood of like 200 bucks MSRP, give or take, depending on what's actually in them. And uh, they're, they also are going to be less money than if you bought all the kits separately. The value is going to vary. Um, I'm not sure what the percentage off of, uh, you know, the individual price is, but it's, you know, year to year and product to product is, you know, obviously going to be a bit different. Uh, there's also starter boxes when there's a new edition launch or, you know, often these just kind of come out like every year. They're um, like in the middle of summer. They'll be, you know, two small forces of different armies that are intended to play against each other as a starter game for two people. And they'll come with tools and sometimes they'll have books and, you know, measuring tools, dice, stuff like that could be in there. Again, the value on this is going to vary, especially because they are coming with other stuff in there. So if all you care about is the models, you're going to get a bunch of extra stuff that you're paying for that you don't want. Uh, these are also limited runs. Um, I believe they're usually a bit longer run that they're not just, um, you know, they're not just churned out when they 
first release and then the production stops. Um, I think because they're intended for starting getting people into the games, I believe they're going to typically be around longer. Um, and then there are also models from other games like Warcry and Underworlds and things like that that are different from what you would typically like they're alternate sculpts a lot, particularly stuff from Underworlds. So those are great to be used as alternate sculpts for heroes and characters. Um, you know, your mileage may vary, particularly good for use in the old world for characters and unit champions and things like that. That, you know, it getting one box of uh, an Underworlds Warband is going to be a heck of a lot cheaper than buying the the number of whatever it is um, that's inside of it as individual characters for something else. The other thing that I didn't mention here, um, well, actually, it, it kind of falls under um, the same category as the Vanguard, start collecting and all that stuff, is the uh, big boxes that they've been putting out for the old world. Uh, so far, we've just gotten like three of them. The... Uh, Tomb Kings, Bretonia, and Orcs and Goblins. I believe we're going to be getting one soon for Dwarfs as well. Those are, again, they're at a decent discount um, compared to current MSRP. Yes, they do have a lot of old models in them that are the same sculpts as the old ones. So compared to what you paid for it 20 years ago, it's going to be more. That complaint I have heard over and over again, but inflation's a thing and production costs go up so they are going to be more money now it's just how it is <laughs> all right um the other thing that i do want to mention in here is how games workshop pricing works in general um you know one of the things that i see often is people kind of saying like you know why am i paying this much for this much plastic in this kit and uh, you know the same amount for this other kit that has so much more in it. Um, well, they're pricing things out not based on cost. They're pricing them out, and they're not doing it based on like points in an army either. They're doing it really just based on what they think people are actually going to pay for it, what the value to the consumer is. So that's why, you know, bigger stuff is going to... Uh, be a lot more money and even though it is not necessarily as much plastic as you know a kit with uh 20 models in it uh you know if it's shiny and cool it's probably going to be uh a, more money if it's big and cool um if it's a bunch of troops that are just going to kind of blend into the crowd then they're probably not going to pay nearly as much per model for those or even per point, so to speak, uh, in game. So that's really, that's how their pricing works. It's, it's really just, um, it, it's based on demand and what they think they can sell stuff for more than anything else. And I, I mean, they, they sell a lot of stuff all the time. So it is clearly, um, they're pricing it at a level that even if you don't like it, uh, the market is bearing it. So it is what it is. All right, secondary markets. The one that pretty much everybody is going to know and be familiar with is eBay. On there, you can get new stuff, new inbox, pre-owned stuff. You're very, you're going to be wildly varied on the value on things that you're going to get. Sometimes it's going to be at MSRP. Sometimes it's going to be a discount off MSRP. If it's something that's out of print, it can be over the original MSRP. Uh, you can, the good thing is you can find those old discounted boxes, uh, perhaps for even less than MSRP. So when you start compounding the, the deal, so to speak, you can get, you know, even if you're getting uh, a, a Vanguard box that is 15% off retail, well, that's going to be like about 40% off of the MSRP of all the individual models that are inside it, um, which is, that, that that's a pretty big discount. <laughs> um, Facebook Marketplace, kind of the same thing as eBay. 
um, your local game stores, a lot of them will buy and resell uh, models and armies and things like that. Usually going to be a lot cheaper than buying it all individually. It's probably going to be all assembled and painted already, um, or at least assembled, maybe primed. So uh, buy at your own risk on anything that is pre-owned. Um, you know, you're going to have to potentially contend with somebody did a bad job building it. Somebody did uh, a crappy job painting it and you need to uh, go back and fix it. Or they did such a crappy job painting it that it's all like chunky and uh, has all kinds of texture to it. So uh, even when you repaint it, it will not look the best all the time. Um, buying, selling, and trading uh, with people that you know. That is one that a lot of people actually do. Um, you know, just swap armies sometimes. Um, and even just like borrowing armies from friends for tournaments and things like that. You know, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, that, you know, if you're trading just with a friend, you're probably going to get a really good deal on stuff most of the time. Um, one of the other things too, is that you don't just have to be on the buy side of transactions with these things. Um, one thing that is really common to do is I buy, say, a, a, a Vanguard box or a, a Spearhead box. And there's three things that I want in it, but there's one unit that's in it that I don't need, don't care about. And this is going to be common with a lot of them because they're not always like all stuff that's currently good in the game. So what you can just go do is turn around and flip that on eBay. Just include the instructions, leave it all new, still on the sprue, because those are all going to come in the box almost all the time as individual kits. Just like they're the same sprues that you would get in the single box for that kit. So you can just go sell that on eBay. It's going to be less than MSRP to sell that, but it's also probably going to be uh, more than the percentage off that you bought it for. So, I mean, there's also definitely people that will go out and just buy a whole bunch of these things, break them up, and then sell the it, the contents of them just to make money. Because um, you can sell the contents for less than uh, what you bought it for. So it that can be a hustle if you're uh, into that sort of thing. I don't know how GW feels about that. Probably not so happy about it. Um, and also, again, if you're on the buy side rather than the sell side, you can pick those up as well. I do that a lot. Um, and one of the fun things, too, is that sometimes people are going to be out there. Um, you know, they're, they bought a kit. They only need a few bits off of it for a conversion or something, and they're selling the rest of it off, and it just has all the stuff that you need on it, so you don't really care. Um, that's what's great with, like, eBay and Facebook Marketplace. A lot of times you can get stuff for really cheap because it's not the complete thing, and as long as there's enough there of what you're interested in that it's worth it, then by all means, like, you can get some really cheap stuff that way. Um, I did that with uh, a unit of Chaos Knights that I found for, um, it was for my um, Warriors of Chaos Old World Army, and uh, it was the new sculpt for Age of Sigmar. In Age of Sigmar, you have to field them in denominations of five. Old World doesn't matter. This particular lot I found on eBay was for four of them. Age of Sigmar players, not going to want that. Old World players, A+. Plus. Love it. So, uh, got a bunch of those as a result, and um, it was a great deal. All right, alternate sculpts. There's a lot of competitors out there. Um, are all of these competitors of the highest quality? No, they're not. Um, some are going to be better than others. Not all of the armies and units that you have are going to have uh, alternate sculpts out there that are going to be easy to work with. The more generic a thing is, the easier it's going to be fi to find an alternate for it. And then you have, like, you know, I hate to rag on Mantic, but they kind of just copy a lot of Games Workshop stuff in their own style. 
um, have their own kind of version of it. Um, but, you know, if you're playing like the Empire in the old world, well, pretty much everything in there is like late medieval Holy Roman Empire Germanic stuff. So just go find historical games that are uh, tend to be a lot cheaper. And I, I've been actually looking at that for my own army. Um, again, recasters, people selling 3D prints, those are out there. Not all of this is always going to be cheaper. There are companies that make alternate sculpts that are extremely high quality of big stuff, right? Like you can get an awesome alternate monster, alternate keeper of secrets or great unclean one or whatever, right? And, you know, they're kind of riffing off of the concept of the GW model, but they're very much their own thing. And they're incredibly beautiful, high quality sculpts uh, cast in high quality resin, all of that stuff. They are A plus, possibly even better quality than what Games Workshop is putting out there. They're going to be more expensive, though. Um, so third-party alternate sculpts, not always cheaper. And most of the stuff, unless you're going to those expensive, high-quality things, like if you're going to something because it is cheaper, it's going to be lower quality most of the time, whether the sculpts are not as nice and crisp or they are just... Um, you know, the the sculpting themselves is just not as high quality, whatever. Um, and the same problem, of course, with recasters and 3D printers. Your your mileage may vary on that uh, greatly, depending on what it is. So definitely buyer beware. All right, and a word on 3D printing. Let's talk about this, uh, because I get, I see this response all the time. 3D printer, go burr! Yeah, um, sure. This is not for everyone, by any means. No, no, no. Um, the quality is usually not going to be as good as getting new Games Workshop product out of the box. Your value for this is going to be best if you're doing high volume, because a 3D printer that is good enough quality to print good-looking 28 millimeter miniatures, it's going to be expensive. Uh, the the cheaper ones are great for terrain. Um, you know, when you have chunkier models where the fine detail isn't quite as important, um, you yeah, know, that's great. Um, it can take a lot of time to do. 3D printing is not a quick process. And uh, the higher quality 3D printers, they are not plug and play, particularly the resin ones. You really need to learn how to use it and you're going to blow a lot of resin and a lot of time uh, getting failed prints and all of those sorts of things happening. So uh, again, uh, you got to be careful. Um, and the costs in general of these things are probably higher than a lot of people that haven't looked into it would estimate. You have to buy the printer itself. You got to buy the resin or whatever material that you're using to actually do the printing. You got to get the STL files, getting good quality STL files, also usually going to cost you money. And then there's all kinds of other stuff that you do need with this. Um, you need to clean off the models. You have to uh, scrape away mold lines and have uh, you know good means of letting it all you know dry and set and really solidify well. The physical quality of these things often they're going to be a lot more brittle than the plastics that Games Workshop uses. So they're going to break all the time. And the materials that are being used, you're probably not going to be able to use like plastic glue for that, which is usually going to be easier to work with in, in my experience anyway. Um, you going to use super glue and then that can run into its own problems. So this is one that is, it sounds like a lot better of an idea than I think it actually is for most people. If you're going to be a, somebody that is, I'm going to print 5,000 points of like, I don't know, 20 different armies in a variety of different games, then hell yeah, 3D printing can save you a ton of money by doing that. If you're going to have, if, if you just want a 2,000 point army of one thing, and then you're never going to pick the thing up again, th this is going to be just as expensive 
as going out and just buying the army um, in you know whatever is direct from Games Workshop. So there's a lot of options out there for getting stuff cheaper. Um, it, I tend to very rarely pay retail for stuff. Um, the flip side of that is you also really want to support your local game stores. So what I tend to do is if the product is something that I really can't get at a discount somewhere else, I will always buy that from my local game store. If it is uh, a relatively small thing or even, you know, some other things that are a little bit bigger, if the discount that I can get from buying it online, it, it, if that's kind of getting knocked out by the shipping costs of the thing, for example, or if it's only saving me 10 bucks, like I'm just going to buy it from my local game store and support them because you need them around. There are places that we run events. They keep the community going. So make sure you're taking care of these guys, even if they're still selling everything at MSRP. Find a good reason to still buy as much from them as you can. I cannot stress that one enough. Um, I know a lot of kind of what I've been saying in here is a, a little bit anti-friendly local game store selling at MSRP, but um, you know, it, a lot of them sell at discounts. Um, so there's not even really any point in buying stuff online a lot of times. And you know, you can also pick up a lot of secondary armies. This is you know where you can network with people to do trades and buy, uh, you know, buy armies off of other people. So it, there's a lot of value in your local game store. So um, I almost feel bad putting this at the end of the video, uh, but this is just kind of like the most logical place that I could stick it. So that's going to be it for now. I uh, hope you all enjoyed. I'll talk to you all later.